Salvete discipuli, this is help for your Latin studies in Henley First Year Latin, exercise number 144. This exercise is the very first one as we enter into lesson 11, which is about personal pronouns. Um, so having a little bit of knowledge about what the different personal pronouns are, um, definitely pronoun order, um, which we've we've looked at a little bit as we've studied verbs because verbs always tell us person and number. And so personal pronouns are what are contained within those verbs. Um, you know the endings of verbs, O-S-T, must, tis, unt, right? And so O means I, S means you, T means he, she, it. Those are the singular forms. Must means we, tis means you all, and unt means they. So those endings on verbs tell us what person and number the verb is and what form that is. Personal pronouns are just taking those pronouns of those verbs and giving them their own word. So um, if, if it's a first person pronoun on rule number 123 in your blue book, that's going to be these forms. Ego, mei, mihi, me, me, nos, nostri, or nostrum. Nobis, nos, nobis. So depending on if it's if your if your pronoun is singular or plural, if it's the subject, if it's genitive, dative, accusative, ablative, right? Those different cases that we know as applied to the different nouns will tell us what form of pronoun we would use in the sentence. Um, and then the second person pronouns are um, listed here, no snow street. Um, oh, I'm sorry, those are just the first person, singular and plural. The second person pronouns are in your rule book as well, rule number 124. Tu, tui, tibi, te, te, wos, westry, or westroom. Wobis, wos, wobis. So again, um, second person pronouns are going to be you um, in the plural form. It can still be said you, but it, it really means you all, like to a group of people. And so depending on if you're using a singular or plural form of that pronoun and what its job is in the sentence, whether it's the subject the direct object, the indirect object, and so forth, you would, you would give it the appropriate form based on the case that it takes in the sentence. Um, also, as we enter into this lesson number 11, we're given a new noun, wideo. This is um, a second conjugation noun. We can tell because the infinitive form has that E-R-E -E ending. Um, and because it doesn't follow the exact pattern of the other second conjugation verbs, they give you all four forms, all four principal parts here. So, wideo, widere, widi, and wisus. That's a verb meaning to see. Um, and, of course, we would take that first form, that first principal part, um, to, be, to, to conjugate and tell who's doing the action. And then we've, we're given an, a new adverb as well, saipe, which means often. So all those are in, interesting, important to know as we look first at exercise 144. In exercise 144, we're, giving, we're given one word in Latin, and we are asked to tell what forms they are and to translate them. So I think it's helpful as we begin exercise 144 to remember what information certain words will include. Okay, so a verb is going to include person, number, and tense. Those three pieces of information will, will give us the form. And then a noun or pronoun in this case, is going to give us gender, number, and case. So with that in mind, that's when we, when we answer this first part, tell what form it is. If it's a verb, we want to give the person number and tense. 
If it's a pronoun, we want to give the gender number in case, and then we'll translate it. So looking at number one, we have widette. That is from our new verb, wideo widere, and it has that T ending. And um, because it doesn't have the BA or the BI before that personal indicator, then we can assume that this is present tense. Okay, so let's give person number and tense. The T ending tells me it's third person singular. So there's our person and number, and the tense is present. And so this form of wideo widere would be translated as he, she, or it sees. It could also be he, she, or it is seeing. And it can also be he, she, or it does see. Those are all present tense translations for the verbs. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, we have mei. All right, so we want to give the form. This is a pronoun, so we want to be sure to tell the gender, the number, and the case. Okay, so mei, if I consult with my pronoun chart here, it is first person. Um, it is, let's see, genitive, it's singular, and the gender is gonna be just it's gonna depend, right, on who is the person communicating. Because in first person it's about the person who's writing or talking. So I am a girl, so it's going to be feminine. It's singular, and it's the case is genitive. And that would be translated of me or of myself. That's the translation. All right, let's do one more. Number three, wide bimus. Wide bimus. This is a verb from our new vocabulary, wideo widere. And I see a couple things here. I notice the bi tense indicator. I notice the mus personal ending. And then our stem, wide, which means C. Okay, so the form, we with verbs, we want to give person, number, and tense. So mus tells me that this is first person plural. And the B-I tells me that it's future. So this would be trans translated. We shall see. Okay, so as you work through exercise 144, just take each word um, with these new pronouns. It would be helpful to have your rule book open, your blue book open to rules 123, well, for this particular exercise to rule 123. Um, <clears throat> and then tell the forms. Remember, if it's a verb, give person number tense. If it's a pronoun, give gender number case, and then translate it accordingly. I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a great day.